Okay, good afternoon, Ms. Kim. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm just wondering what's the composition of our audience because I was actually having a hard time packaging my presentation because this is actually came from my dissertations and it was very thick and it was, uh, it was a hard time really uh, putting it in few slides and then presenting a, in, a, in an audience which I don't really know um, what's the composition. But anyway, um, yeah, before I'll, I'll start or by way of starting, I'd like to introduce myself, although I was already introduced, uh, and also this is to give you the context of how I get into this research, the texting as an everyday farming practice. This is actually one chapter of my dissertation. So I've been working for field rice for 15 years, and um, so the bulk of my work is basically on development communication. So in my earlier um, career at field rice, I was heavily involved in the production aspect of communication. But uh, later on, I was involved in development work. And um, before I, I went for my uh, PhD, I was involved in a project, um, Open Academy for Philippine Agriculture. Maybe some of you are familiar with the project. So it's a, it's a, project, um, it's a, it's a project that is um, it's a collaboration with different agencies in which the goal was to explore the applications of ICTs for new media in agriculture. And one of the modalities we tested uh, and designed was the Farmers Tech Center. And in fact, it's being uh, still implemented, it's still up and running right now. My field rice is still serving a lot of farmers. But, uh, yeah, so, and then I decided to, in fact, originally, I supposed to, to study the whole project and explore every aspect of, of the new media interventions. But I realized it was a very huge project, so I just um, focused on texting. After all, this is a, a very phenomenal um, uh, happening in the Philippines. So, yeah, so I think uh, this texting phenomenon is a revolution in communications in the Philippines, uh, with a penetration rate of 75% even much higher than was the case of TV and radio. And it has not only become popularly used in the uh, in metropolitan, but also by the farmers, you know, in the rural farming areas. And it's been used mainly for testing. And uh, reports from the Farmers Tech, uh, tech Center indicates that uh, it's really heavily used for farming. From, from the time we uh, started the project in 2016, we only received uh, 11 text messages, but now we're responding to more than 100,000 text messages from different audiences, farmers and other stakeholders. And that's really interesting. But for me, uh, this is more than a communicational revolution. But uh, this texting phenomenon is suggestive of uh, cultural production on the farm. And um, uh, that's basically my interest, as, me as mentioned by Dr. Uh, his team a while ago. I'm interested in the social and cultural aspect of development communications. And we, there, there have been many studies done already evaluating the effectiveness of texting. But uh, little attention has been given on the social and cultural aspect of texting. And I believe that uh, texting, texting is more than a communication tool. It is becoming a way of life for every Filipino now. And so my interest is basically to understand texting as an everyday practice. And of course, this is going to be done in the context of, of farming. So usually we view everyday life as in terms of space and time relations. We understand um, everyday life of what transpired in a particular place, given in a particular period. And that's basically our understanding of everyday life. And there are actually a lot of scholars and researchers who uh, did a uh, study on everyday life, especially, um, I'm not sure how, how do you pronounce it? Michel Descartes or Descartes? Descartes. Descartes, okay. Yeah, his, his, work, his work is famous on, in, on everyday life. And he himself uh, studied everyday, everyday life in terms of space and time relations. But he was very particular on understanding the tactics used by individuals in the production of um, everyday practices. But from my point of view, my understanding of texting as an everyday life is that we only get to understand the meaning of texting 
based on how people live them. And for me, texting is reflexive. So when you say reflexive, sorry. When you say reflexive, texting as an everyday life is that it creates reality and at the same time it is the reality. So that's why I am using ethnomethodology because um, it's, it builds on the assumption that meaning or impact can only be surface um, when it is um, in the, in, uh, when it is lived in a particular um, actions. And I say that texting as an everyday life is indexical because we only get to understand the meaning of the technology when it is uh, achieved in a particular context. So it's indexical. So that's my understanding. And then thirdly, meaning is not something that is based on the standards of traditional logic, but it is based on practical actions or loose actions, and that's the common knowledge. So these are basically the structures that help me understand texting as an everyday life. And of course, I've done that in the context of time and space relations. So yeah, so that's basically the objective of my research, to understand that texting is an everyday life. And the first objective, and that's basically reflexivity, how does texting shape farmers' everyday life and vice versa? Number two, how does texting become part of farmers' everyday life? So as I mentioned a while ago, texting is lexical. Number three is, how is texting essentiated in farmers' everyday life? And uh, these are the data that I, that I used. Um, I used the Farmers Tech Center pilot testing data from 2006 to 2015. And I've also done a paid study. I've done a field work and ethnographic study in one, of the, uh, in one of the pilot sites of the Farmers Tech Center. And uh, I've used, of course, interpretive qualitative research, uh, especially in ethnomethodology, and for the basic in interpretive quality, ground theory, and adaptive analysis. Central to my result of my analysis is that uh, in understanding texting as an everyday life is that the meaning of texting is basically, for, for farmers, it's basically accomplishing farm work. So when I ask the farmers or even when I went to, the, to their community, it's, when, say about, when we talk about everyday life, it's all about accomplishing farm work. And looking at it from a macro uh, perspective, so look at this. Um, in accomplishing farm, we can see that texting is central in the accomplishment of farm work as evident by these messages. So texting has been used across the year or across the cropping seasons. So from, uh, from planting to harvesting, even during the period. So texting has become integral in the accomplishment of farm work. And then if you look at it from, from an everyday uh, life perspective or from the micro perspective, you can even see that texting has become either a separate or an integrated activity in the farmer's everyday life, from waking up to sleep. And then even in the budgetary uh, requirement of farmer's everyday life, uh, texting um, constitutes 10% of the budgetary requirements. And even with the way they use texting, it occupies like more, more bulk of the text messages. It's all about farmers. So this result suggests that um, indeed um, texting is no longer just a mere tool that they use to get information, but it has become part of their lives. So farmers describe everyday life in terms of three um, structures or areas. When I talk to the farmers, they actually talk about production, farm production, what to grow, how to grow it, that's information, and where to get the information, it's basically interactions. And in the light of the integrations of new media, in this case, the texting with um, uh, rice farming, I've observed some redefining or restructuring of, this, um, of these forms, especially in the areas of time space, household relations, and abstract system. So in terms of time space, previously rice cropping is always linked to time and to, to space. Uh, it, it always uh, evolves in, within the confine of the local knowledge system. But now rice cropping has become phantasmagoric. This is a third point by Gideon. He said that um, the local condition has now become stretched out 
and it's being influenced by the part, by the factors from far away, and that's it's really very true. And uh, in fact, um, the devolution of agricultural extension in the Philippines was actually based on the conventional belief that you know rice cropping is something that is local, but um, this result textbook is given as an idea that um, rice is no longer something that is influenced by its immediate milieu, but it's also being influenced by, by some factors from faraway places. And uh, the other one is the re reorientation of time and space. Before um, everything happens in a particular place at a particular time, but this time you can do something regardless of time and space. Example for this farmer, he texted um, to farmer's tech center on, say, uh, on this time, but he got the replies maybe 14 hours after. So, when accomplishing something, it doesn't always mean that you know, time and space uh, come together. And another interesting um, uh, result that I surfaced in my study in relation to accomplishing farm work is the production of social actions. When farmers said, uh, text ko na lang sa anak ko o sa asawa ko. So this suggests of, of the production of social relations. Example, the farmers uh, telling his child to do the texting, that actually um, is instrumental to the accomplishment of farm work. So these are some of the very um, interesting results that um, I surface in my study. The other one is the emergence of new identities and functions. So before, um, children or the, part, the youth uh, don't really have um, authority in terms of uh, at home or in the community. But this time, uh, they play a very significant, they've been accorded with authority in terms of knowledge and access. And even the wives, the farmers' wives, um, uh, they play a very important role as well because they're like the manager or the accountant at home. So farmers or their children cannot use the cell phone without their uh, without them, you know, interfering. So, in if we are to make a development program, we have to understand the complexity of household relations, how they interact vis-a-vis -vis the use of cell phone. And uh, nowadays as well, um, if before the way we do extension work, it's always based on face value. We go to the community and uh, we need to we talk to the farmer, but this time the production of knowledge is now based on trust. And to be able to do this, it also requires some technical expertise, which means that in the case for farmer sex tech center, that serves as a technical expertise. So I recall uh, one, my, one of my respondents said that uh, I don't really know who I was texting with. What I know is that I'll be getting information from Phil Rice, from tech centers, so from the farmer's tech center. So in that case, the, according to Giddens, um, actually Giddens already theorized this one, and they call this as technical system. So I mean, we need a technical system in the modern lives to ensure ontological security. So ontological security basically means one's confidence to continue his life regardless of, of time and space. So um, this is actually a very short presentation, and uh, I've got these summaries of, of my results. And I'm, I'm posting this, this, uh, this to you because um, consistent with my, belief, with my constructivist belief that I cannot really um, give you some standard recommendations. It's really up to you on how are you going to interpret this data and use this for your work. And these are, I think, serious um, realities or challenges that we have to uh, reflect on, especially this reorientation of time and space in rice cropping, uh, rice cropping becoming phantasmagoric, shifting of resources of power from land to labor to capital to information, and uh, the shifting of function from stakeholder to stakeholder. Um, who's working at API, API here? Oh, okay. Well, so, and then uh, the importance of trust as a mechanism for for uh, knowledge productions over face value, of course, the emergence of new authorities, in this case, the youth or new identities. So, um, you can access uh, the details of my work at uh, this website. And um, I'm going to end my presentation from here. And I would actually encourage forum or uh, participations because I'm not really sure. Um, 
what is your interest in terms of, of my work. And that's all I'm doing. Okay, that was a, a very quick presentation. So the, the, the floor is now open for your comments or questions. So please use the microphones located along the aisles and kindly introduce yourself and the organization you represent. Yes, myself. Thank you and congratulations, Ron. I'm sorry I did not, I missed the beginning. And I'm interested to know if perhaps you establish it in your background. How much is the volume of uh, uh, use? How much is the volume or intensity or volume of use of texting by the farmers among your constitu project constituents, I suppose? Or the intended users of your rice for this text, uh, texting center? Um, I don't know the latest uh, figure, but uh, we actually started in 2016. So since then, we received 11 text messages. But now, we've been responding to more than 100,000 uh, text messages yeah, from all over the Philippines. And uh, most of these queries um, are about um, on varieties, pest and diseases, and nutrient uh, management. embracing the conventional way of doing extension. And um, so just, uh, I think our extension system uh, needs some some rethinking or re rethinking or redefining in terms of its function to cover um, some aspects that are emerging, you know, like uh, as I mentioned a while ago. Example for, for a text center for instance, it's becoming really very effective. But it thinks that we don't have, we lack the, the technical uh, the ex the technical expertise uh, in terms of promoting uh, the farmer's tech center. Example for that is that some farmers will text the farmer's tech center at around 12 uh, midnight. But our uh, system is incapable to respond. So maybe our, our, our we should work on that in terms of developing a software that could generate and auto replies something like that because it's really effective and based on our, on our analysis we get to receive um, text messages even during that uh, hour during that time and, and our extension system needs retooling in terms of because most of our extension workers are are, are old already so and they don't know how to, to use the, the cell phone so i think they need some retooling in terms of which capacitating them to how to use cell phone or even uh, farmers are very good in, they, they have their own language in texting and uh, I'm not sure if we are actually aware of the text language and we need to understand. Example? So, uh, like the way you spell uh, where are you, where are you? I remember my colleagues said, uh, what did they say? Where are you? What's that? So, stop. So, um, <laughs> so are you saying that the farmers have also adopted the texting language? And you know, the mainstream texting language. Surprisingly, yes. Um, yeah, I think it's the, the children also texting. What was that? The children also are the ones texting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, some farmers actually uh, uh, do it uh, through the instrumentality of their children or wives. And that's also another aspect that we have to also look into. Is that when we conduct development work or maybe training, we should tap these uh, emerging stakeholders like farmers' children or farmers' wives' house in, in our training program because most of our training programs are all are all designed for farmers but not really for, for the young people. Anyway, since this is the 
this is a discussion. Do you mind if I uh, yeah. offer a few more? Uh, well, just listening to your uh, recommendations. So, have you tried or have you thought about uh, outsourcing to call centers? Because call centers are 24 7, right? And what you really need is perhaps a system, maybe a KM system, I don't know, that provides the information because the farmers cannot do the searching themselves yet. Maybe they don't have the capacity or they don't have the access. Maybe they're not using smartphones, for instance, but just the basic texting mode. But uh, the call centers are the ones, the call center agent is the one searching for him, the answers that are already there because they are research results from Philip Rice, yeah. for instance. We've actually done that uh, with, the, okay. the, with the program, with the Obama program. Okay. Uh, We've tested several modalities, uh, and one of which is the establishment of queues. Okay. So we just ident identified um, uh, a pilot community stand, and we put um, a queues. It's a computer-based information system. It's a strategic place in, a, in the farming community. And then we assign a particular uh, person there who will basically uh, assist the farmers in searching for information. Um, yeah, so I think that uh, has to be lobbied uh, to the national government because I think it's actually also a very good project. So. Yes, yes. First, yeah. Could you kindly elaborate on how the farmers tech center works? Mayroon talaga siyang extension worker there, station? Yeah, yeah. We have, um, we have full-time staff on board to receive um, text messages from the farmers. And in fact, this, uh, uh, you know, we experience traffic. And when traffic gets into the system, you know, the messages don't really get into the system. So what we've done is we've done it strategically. Um, of course, it might require some programming. But yeah, I think uh, the system now really works well. So we, we uh, sort of distribute the manpower. For example, if a farmer comes from Mindanao, yeah. the text message goes to uh, our text agent from Phil Rice, Mitzayam, for instance. Yeah. Phil Rice, Mitzayam. Yeah. So it's region regionalized now. But they're all in one system. So it's actually a computer-based uh, system that we use. And the good thing about that system, because it has also some um, mechanism to, to document, to categorize text messages. The details of uh, sorry, the details of um, the use of texting is actually in the chapter four of my thesis. It's actually the technical aspect, and what I presented to you is the the cultural aspect of my of my research. If you want to know more on how. Um, SMS is being utilized by the farmers and how how to do the study. And how many farmers were involved in the study? Giving our respondents? Yes. Oh, wait, I, that's, I don't have any data. Um, you know, surprisingly, uh, our belief is that farmers don't really do the texting. But our, our data actually suggests it's still the farmers that constitutes the, the bulk of the, our clients. And the second one would be the extension workers. Um, there are, there are one, one bodies. Last year we have maybe 15,000 active um, registered clients. We also have some random clients. But uh, so what we usually do to promote the farmers tech center is when we go to the farm to do a um, Field, farmers field school, we ask them to register. So yeah. So the registered clients may be around fifteen thousand. But every year we actually um, monitor them because some of them are one body so many. So we send them messages and then ask them. Okay, that's fifteen thousand actually. Oh, so I'm not sure with the recent uh, figure. Over the Philippines? Yeah. So that's not only farmers, but also extension workers and other stakeholders. But it's pretty minimal, knowing that we have 2.5 billion farmers. So we still have to do a lot of campaigning to, 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 to reach out to farmers. Could you? So uh, you're not able to filter the kind of who, who is 
is uh, asking what. Like I, I was wondering if there are also students who ask and for not yeah, necessarily gotcha. for farming but for school purposes, for instance. Uh, yeah, maybe we have to do a study of that. Um, it's very interesting. But we have student clients um, on this text as to uh, how they use the, the, the information. on how to do land preparations. That's the benefit when you are registered. But everyone is free to send a message of where. So there is no keyword like, I know just the same text that I've read in your presentation. No keywords like? We, we used to, uh, we only have um, keywords, we tried um, syntax, but um, it actually didn't really work. Uh, in fact, before we use, what was the keyword before? So, so based on our study, it just didn't work. So the normal stuff where you just do the normal texting actually works. So we used to uh, use syntax, like for example, if you want to ask about varieties, this is the syntax that we have to follow. But uh, farmers can't follow it, so we just... Especially um, now we, under, we get to understand that, um, so it's not really 
farmers are only involved in the process of, of, of uh, getting uh, information, but the wives and the children are also part of it. So maybe when we uh, design a development extension program, we might as well have these other these intermediaries. So the everyday life, um, in this respect, helps me understand um, the dynamics and complexities of how texting has been has been integrated in, in farmers' in farmers' lives, um, especially in the accomplishment of farm work. 